Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Bundesliga's review. Uh, crazy week this was. In this week, not necessary weekend. Uh, there were some remarkable results on the weekend as well. But the main stories are definitely all the coaching changes that happened, prospective coaching changes and off-field issues. Uh, that made for a hell of storylines that actually to be honest, uh, gripped me more than what was happening on the field, which was not all that uh, bad. So I will go uh, into all this um, while we go in. I'm wearing Gladbach, not only because Gladbach won, but you know, they have a new coach as well. Uh, and which to me is the biggest, well, maybe second biggest even now that we know that Hansi Flick has asked to resign, which caused all kinds of trouble there. But we talked about it already last week. But um, during the week, almost the biggest storyline was that Adi Hütte is leaving Frankfurt to go to Gladbach. And they announced that just in the week before Frankfurt played at Gladbach. And we also know that in Frankfurt the uh, um, sporting director is leaving. So um, given that they have an awesome season, it does not make a whole lot, lot of sense of what is happening there. As I said already, uh, Bayern coach Hansi Flick, after the win in Wolfsburg, uh, which probably was the best game of the weekend there, um, asked now officially to step down. We already said that this, uh, everyone knew that this is going to happen. Now we have it officially. Uh, and then uh, we also had a new coach in Köln, where Gistol was fired last uh, week after this heartbreaking loss to Mainz. And he was replaced by Friedhelm Funke, who had just come from Düsseldorf, where he was fired, uh, I think, uh, during last season. Um, and you're coming out of retirement just to maybe save Köln, who he had already in the early 2000s uh, once. And he's one of those core, core, core coaches that's kind of like the fireman uh, in there. So yeah, um, as I said, on the pitch, uh, Gladbach completely took care of Frankfurt. Uh, we had a great game between Wolfsburg and Bayern, where Bayern uh, ran, uh, ran away, Köln beaten by a really, really much more and totally undeserved scoreline uh, in the derby against Le 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 Leverkusen and Dortmund go in. And yes, we have another, we have a Corona postponement uh, at Hertha, which also has lots of people worried, but and Leipzig just when you thought maybe there's again a title change drop points, so yeah. And in Austria, the biggest news also off field, we had the licenses for the, the playing licenses for the next season have been handed out. And while almost all the big teams got it, Austria Vienna did not get it. And they are scrambling for money like crazy. And it's not inconceivable that Austria Vienna will be relegated to the amateur ranks. Um, for a pot potentially the second biggest team in Austria, this causes huge, huge headlines and all kinds of questions are asked at the moment. Uh, what I hear is that if they want to stay in the league, they probably will, um, they could if they go through um, liquid, they, um, yeah, in uh, administration, but then they will be docked six points and for two seasons cannot buy any new players so they only and you know it's a whole lot of this but all in time i mean i already talked a lot about that um but i want to go on to uh, on to the field uh first we had uh to start off the bundesliga which is out in germany in germany i owe you there is the nil nil of hoffenheim against Lever leverkusen which changed absolutely nothing in the table except that leverkusen and hoffenheim each had a point more other than that nothing really changed so which which was good then Hoffenheim plays another nil-nil at Leipzig, so uh, they had a pretty busy week. And at that, there was a game with Leipzig, just at the very end thought they had the winner and then a the handball uh, got it off. We had another nil-nil between Augsburg and Bielefeld, the less I say about that one, the better. I think Bielefeld was even the slightly better team in there. As I say, Gladbach, uh, it has been, I mean, a month ago, Adi Hütter, kind of said, yeah, I will stay with uh, Frankfurt when there was no contact now. And then this week he made it public during the international break. There were some contacts from Gladbach, who of course have Marco Rose going to Dortmund, uh, which kind of set the whole thing off. And I think the spinning of the coaching carousel in Germany is not done yet. And so, yeah, 
Uh, it was then said Xavi Alonso at one time was Gladbach co coach, which uh, seemed a little bit odd. Um, yes, he has played with Bayern, but it still seems he seemed a little bit odd. But no, they went for Adi Hütter, and I totally understand it. And Adi Hütter has a little bit of a history to leave just when it's about the best time. I mean, he left the Young Boys uh, after three years when he just got them to the championship. Young Boys actually now fourth year in a row being champ, 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 champions of Switzerland. Yeah, I'm talking a lot. So yeah, uh, that was one I think in Salzburg he also left, but that, that, that was because he didn't. This was right at the tra transition when Salzburg uh, was about to become the feeder club for Leipzig, kind of, and he said he doesn't want to do that. So there's a little bit his history there with uh, Hütter, and probably he sees that he has a lot of players that he knows from Salzburg at Gladbach, and with everything that's going down at Frankfurt, with Freddy Bobic leaving and maybe Ralf Rani coming uh, in, where, you know, uh, I think there are... There are enough reasons for him to kind of say, yeah, better leave Frankfurt now before it, uh, on a high note, before it gets um, worse. Clearly, Frank was not, not up for this game. Uh, Ginter in the 10th, Hoffmann in the 16th, and uh, it, it was really bad what Frank was showing. Uh, ben Benz win the 67th, and then very late on, Hannes Wolf uh, made it a rather, rather one sided scoreline. Um, one that so again goes against the grain of whatever was ha ha happening uh, so far because Frank was really good and Klapper was really bad. But yeah, um, we have to see. Frank Frankfurt does ha not have the toughest of the programs remaining, so uh, as we'll see, they're probably still good to go for the Champions League in many ways. Freiburg was about to almost be Fre Freiburg. They said, Klar, Klapper is a much bigger story than Freiburg. Uh, also, had no problem in. Uh, disposing Schalke, um, the first goal they completely forgot about Sa Santa Maria. Uh, the second one, uh, who then gives the Höhler second one, uh, Klaus and Hündler basically uh, clumsy elbow challenge, challenge uh, un unnecessary, gives them a penalty, Sala, and then uh, two more goals added in the second half to give Freiburg finally a win again. I think they had, had not won in four games. Was a, as I said, I was about to wear many Freiburg jersey. Union against Stuttgart. This was a relegation duel uh, two, se two seasons ago. Union had a really good first half through Brömer and Musa uh, taking two leads. Stuttgart then was pressing. They got through first uh, in the 49th, uh, the goal back, and then could have probably added to any to two, but Union really underlining their um, push for European spots, which is rather, rather remarkable. And Wolfsburg Bayern, uh, interesting detail, the two coaches went for a dinner just the day before. Um, I found this super interesting and then, uh, you know, ahead of the game, a lot of questions, of course, against, uh, again, ask of Hansi Flick. Uh, nothing came from that. But uh, Bayern won this game mostly because uh, Castells on the first two goals did not look uh, good. I mean, the one from Musiala, yes, maybe with a little bit lucky, you can save it, but uh, in the 15th, but in the 24th, when Chupo Moting makes his goal, uh, he has the ball and drops it right to the feet of Chupo Moting, who just can put it in, 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 in the empty net, which goes totally counter. Wolfsburg has been so tight in defense, and now they lost four to Frankfurt, now three to Bayern. Wolfsburg has a rather tough program com coming up. Uh, Vejos pulls one back in typical fashion, uh, but Musiala gets another one. And you think it's all uh, smooth sailing for Bayern. However, uh, Philipp, 54th, pulls one back and then Wolfsburg was really pressing for that equalizer and Bayern just clung on to that uh, win, which is one step closer to the championship now that uh, Leipzig dropped points. Um, I already said that uh, Leverkusen were just clinically against Kern. Fifth minute, Liam Bailey gives them a 1-0 and then Kern, I think they hit twice the wood, woodwork, played really, really well. And that, 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 that's the thing with Kern. Kern is a, very, uh, a team that plays actually very nice and pleasing to the eye. However, uh, they don't get the, uh, the goals and then Musa Diaby in the 51st um, gets uh, the second one. Kern still could have scored goal, of course, yeah, that it ends 3-0 is an absolute shambles of a result. 
And then Dortmund uh, to today, they found themselves down 1-0 in the 14th, but um, they, they turned around Holland getting two goals, ending his non-scoring streak. Gio Reyna gets one, and then very late on uh, Hummels gets a fourth one. Dortmund playing in new jerseys, which are very re reminiscent of the 90s away jerseys, black with the neon sleeves. I have to say, I actually like this much better than the current away jerseys. So, yeah. The Mainz Hertha game, Hertha had COVID cases, so this had, had to be spawned. So at the moment we have Bayern now even more in the lead, 99% champions, and uh, Leipzig just won behind, which I uh, missed it before. Let's talk about the uh, Bayern coaching situation. I said Hansi Flick asked to have his contract resolved, which the Bayern uh, leadership did not take lightly because they said this is going to be, you know, in two or three weeks they will announce it. And now he, he did it one sided himself. But, you know, this kind of shows the inner workings of Bayern a little bit because I think he really wanted to tell the players and just not be asked the whole time. So uh, that's clear. The problem for Bayern is now. They don't. They need a coach. They really need a coach. And who will, will it be? Everyone says Nagelsmann, but Nagelsmann doesn't have a, a contract clause that would allow him to leave. So this will be a big thing to watch. And I actually, I actually think that this change from getting Hansi Flick, who transformed this team from a team that was really not good into the best team in Europe. And now he goes back again and they have to start a new kind of with almost with many of the main players of the last few seasons missing. I could see a similar situation to what happened to, to Juventus the next season is probably the best season uh, for a non-Bayern team to win the championship. So we have to see. Uh, if So uh, we also see that uh, chances now for the Champions League. Uh, Eintracht Frankfurt is slightly higher than Wolfsburg and this is I was, was was a little bit baffled by that because Wolfsburg is just slightly higher rated, but Wolfsburg has a game in Dortmund and has the tougher schedule to finish out the season. So Dortmund actually does not have it in their own hands, but it looks a little bit more friendly and it's not a foregone conclusion that it will be Wolfsburg and Dortmund, although they still look very, very strong in there. In the um, adjusted the standings, I mean, I did not talk much about relegation because I want to go this uh, when, when, when we look at expected, but we see that uh, Hertha and Bielefeld uh, would f uh, flip flop spots. And as we look in the relegation, uh, Hertha at the moment actually, Bremen played so badly today <laughs> that they got into the relegation battle again. It's Mainz and Bielefeld now, in many ways, that are there. And Kern really looks, they have, they have really tough games come, 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 coming up. Speaking of which, Köln has to play against Leip Leipzig and we have a midweek round. We have Bayern against Leverkusen. This was a huge game just before Christmas where that was the point where I thought that Bayern and it turned out to be where Bayern really turned things around. I'm not sure about Hertha against Freiburg at this moment if they can play at all. Uh, Wolfsburg at Stuttgart, not an easy game. Uh, Dortmund against Union, also not that uh, straightforward. And who does Frankfurt have against Augsburg? That probably should be... Uh, easy points. Bielefeld will probably pick up the points against Schalke. Um, so yeah, and Mainz at, at, at Bremen. It stays, it will stay interesting. And then on the weekend, Augsburg currently, this is a must win for Köln, uh, it has it has to be said. Um, if we look now for the champions, uh, and then, no, let's look at the relegation, Gladbach, Bielefeld, yeah, will not be easy, will not, not be easy, Mainz against Bayern, so I mean, if Köln wants to do something, uh, it's the weekend where they really have to pull out the win, because uh, Hertha is playing Schalke, so yeah, uh, and here we have Wolfsburg against Dortmund, that is, this is probably the biggest game, and also Leverkusen Frankfurt, this was a, always a game that Frankfurt did not like. Going to Austria, as I said, the big uh, news was that Austria Vienna didn't get the license. At least, I mean, they can appeal it, they will uh, appeal it, and there's a whole lengthy pro process that might drag, drag on for an, uh, an, an, another month or so. But in the first uh, at first time asking, they have no law, no beginning, they're missing about 7 million euros. Yes, this sounds ridiculous numbers, but in Austria, this is huge. Um, and it looks really, really bad in many ways because. Uh, they don't have a main sponsor. No, no one gives up the banking guarantee. And what um, now there is some 
businessmen forming, but they of course want to take over the club, which uh, the current leadership, who is on the fire for at least two or three seasons. It's, I think it's gonna, gonna, gonna be tight. Um, mainly what hit, hit, hit them is they built a new stadium, which cost them a lot of money. And now Corona hit and they cannot get, I mean, they were about to host, for instance, the Women's Championship Final, and now this was wiped off the table. And so a lot of uh, income went away. I, I also remember a cup final bid to me, uh, should have been played there, but then Rapid was playing there. And of course the fans didn't want to have to. So crazy stuff like that. I said it before, um, if they will not get the license to play in either the first or the second division, they will be moved back to uh, to the Vienna League, so they will go uh, probably fourth tier, not even third tier, which I think is an absolute death uh, spell for Austria, because that would mean that they would need uh, three promotions to get back in, into the first league. This could be added also, the second team is thrown into this in disarray. So yeah, uh, this is one scenario. On the other side, this might be like it was for Lusk um, eight years ago, where suddenly you got rid of the bad ownership and a good ownership could build up on a new basis. And uh, you see that Lusk is doing uh, overall well uh, and is a real power in Austria. So it might be the restart, might be nice for Austria Vienna. But there are many, many worrying signs. As I said, if they go to uh, in administration, uh, there's a, 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 a corona administration, six points be, uh, would be deducted. And then there are two years where they could not sign. Um, they cannot buy a player, so they cannot buy a transfer fee. They could buy out of contract players, which yeah, uh, also means that you probably will get relegated at that point. At, they are losing also the coach who probably saw something's coming and coach Peter Stöger is probably also rumored to go back to Köln again so interesting happenings for sure also at least one against St. Burton uh, the other games I mean I watched Salzburg against, against Lask and it was nil nil for the longest of times uh, really good chance actually at the beginning of uh, uh, no, no, at the beginning was rather the null neutral and then a really good chance for uh, Lask uh, through Balic, but you know, Berish uh, for Salzburg hit already the boat, the woodwork, and then uh, laid on a, a pretty good chance by Dakar. The second half, I, I actually thought that uh, Lusk was not that bad, could have gotten a penalty. I personally don't think it necessarily was a penalty, but there were some, some, some chances. Just when you thought we'll get a draw in, Sal in, in Salzburg, uh, a really bad deflection. Uh, from Andrade puts the ball to Berish in the 87th, puts, pull, puts it in, in, in the net, and then in stoppage time it's 2 0. And it's what I I hate those games when you really you're so close of achieving something that you wouldn't really expect, and then yeah. Uh, and Rapid Sturm also ended goal goalless because Sturm, after they went down the man in the 39th, when a striker was sad, as I said, off, they just shut up shop, and that was that. So in Austria at the table, not, not much change because the Wolfsburg goes over Tirol, which kind of was expected, Salzburg cruising, Lask at the moment set for third spot, they have to play Sturm soonish, uh, which probably will decide whether they will, will finish in third or fourth, and on the bottom also not much uh, changed, expected standings is still, it's rather murky between two and four to be honest, so uh, that's gonna, gonna be interesting. As well, um, we have also midweek round, Lask against Rapid, a game you, you, usually is one of the most exciting games. I'm not looking forward to it because uh, Lask is just with the injury crisis at the moment, they cannot play as they want to and that doesn't make it easy. And yeah, I'm afraid that Lask will probably lose a uh, third spot after this round, which they can win back if they uh, play against Sturm. Um, and yeah, I think that's the big game also on that uh, weekend round. Lots of things happening, lots of things to talk about. Uh, let me know your opinion on all these topics if you have uh, any. I just think it was really, really crazy what was happening uh, in Germany with all the coaching changes and also in Austria with the player license uh, not being given to Austria Vienna. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. 
Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.